So what does forgiveness have to do with multiplication? Besides a few verses in King James Version of Matthew 18, honestly not very much. In Matthew 18, Jesus is answering Peter's question regarding how many times he should forgive somebody who sins against him. Jesus' answer is 70 times 7. That's 490 times for those of you trying to do the quick math in your head. I don't know about you, but forgiving someone twice is hard enough. 490 times? That's asking a lot. But if I'm following Jesus and I stop to think about the number of sins that Jesus forgave when he hung on the cross, 490 times doesn't really seem like too many. Before I get too deep into why forgiveness is important to following Jesus, I want to start by addressing what forgiveness is not. In her book, Forgiving What You Can't Forget, Lisa Turkhurst does a great job explaining that forgiveness is not a message that diminishes what you've been through or makes light of the anguish you've cried a million tears over. It's not a message that justifies abuse or abandonment or affairs that are all wrong, no matter how they're flipped or framed by others. It's not a message that demands you excuse the cruelest, worst crimes committed against you or those you love. Please hear that before you continue watching. So what is forgiveness? The Spiritual Discipline Handbook defines it this way. To forgive is to condemn a wrong, but spare the wrongdoer hatred, revenge, self-righteous indignation by joining them to Jesus' own forgiving heart. It's giving up your right to collect the debt owed to you by the person who wronged you. It's acting towards another human being the same way Jesus acted towards the entire human race. When I think of following Jesus, of truly being like him, of being obedient to him, forgiveness is essential. Our whole identity as Christians is based on the belief that the purpose of his death on the cross was to forgive us of our sins. So it shouldn't be a surprise that in order to look more like Jesus, we're going to have to forgive others. Repeatedly in scripture, Matthew 6, Colossians 3.13, Ephesians 4.32, Jesus tells us over and over to forgive others just as we've been forgiven. But he never says it's going to be easy. Forgiveness is kind of like eating vegetables. They might not be the tastiest thing, but man, are they good for you. Forgiveness is kind of like that. Might be hard to swallow, but it's actually really good for you. It releases you from anger. It breaks the cycles of hatred, revenge, and bitterness. It builds mercy and compassion inside of you. And most importantly, it makes your heart more like Jesus is. While following Jesus and his command to forgive is hard, it brings freedom. But how? To turn the other cheek when you're wronged? To bless those who curse you? Those were revolutionary ideas then, and over 2,000 years, it really hasn't changed. Forgiveness still doesn't come naturally for most of us. But thankfully, we don't do it alone, and we don't have to feel like it. Forgiveness is a choice. When we choose to forgive because we're following Jesus, we have the Holy Spirit in us. We join our heart to Jesus' heart for another sinner, and we let the Spirit work through us. Based on those two things, here's an example prayer of forgiveness. Basically, it's just, Lord, I forgive so-and-so of whatever, of my own free will today. I choose to let go of my right to collect any debt from them, and for whatever my feelings don't yet allow for, the blood of Christ will surely cover. Amen. I want to share one last biblical tip to help with following Jesus in forgiveness. If you follow forgiveness with a blessing for that other person, Jesus says in Luke 6 to, curse, to bless those who curse us and to forgive others just as we've been forgiven. So following forgiveness with a blessing enables us to remember the past without all of the pain. A blessing allows you to replace the negative, ugly thoughts about somebody else with a positive thought every time you recall the person who hurt you. You can see a whole list of blessings down below. I love the statement Michael O'Shields makes in his book, Rethinking Forgiveness. If you continue to bless the offender, I guarantee the devil will soon quit reminding you of the matter. Today, 
I'd love for you to just take a minute and bring to mind one person or situation you need to forgive. Close your eyes. Imagine yourself sitting at the cross where Jesus hangs. See him holding on to the abuse, the wrongs, the evils, and the sins of the whole world. Watch how he doesn't turn it back onto those who deserve it. Now imagine him asking you to follow him by forgiving that person you just brought to mind a moment ago, just like he's forgiving the world, just like he's forgiven you. If there's anything in your life that you're struggling to forgive or that you feel is unforgivable, or if you're carrying any hurts that you don't know what to do with, please reach out to the care department at Chapel Street Church. We'd love to help.